Hey guys, we're here in the rain making a video about Japanese beetles. Because as gardeners, we love the rain, but we hate Japanese beetles. I'll tell you who loves Japanese beetles though is our chickens. Okay, another benefit to backyard chickens, they'll eat your beetles. Okay, the way we like to deal with Japanese beetles is naturally. Uh, there are several birds whose favorite food is Japanese beetles. Okay, these birds include these chickens. Okay, but also, but we can't let them in the garden. That's why we also have another weapon we use with Japanese beetles. We're going to show you how to make it. But starlings, grackles, robins, crows, various types of sparrows, um, catbirds. These birds love Japanese beetles. So one thing we started doing in the winter, as you see we have this bird feeder hanging here. It's been here for a long time. We feed birds in the winter when they don't have enough food outside occurring in, in nature. And we trained our birds to come to this rose bush for food. So this year we've not had any problem with Japanese beetles because we have birds all day long will sit on this lamppost and eat the beetles as they try to land on the bush. We got one beautiful bloom already this year. We gave it a hard pruning. We're gonna get more blooms and we're not using sprays, which is important to us because we have a pond right there, okay? Now, in our garden, we are currently being attacked vigorously by some Japanese beetles on our green bean teepee. We can't let our chickens in the garden for obvious reasons, and we don't want to lure other birds into our garden for the same obvious reasons. So I've been out here making um, some Japanese beetle traps that I use with just four various items from the kitchen and some empty milk jugs. And I thought, well, why not show you what I'm doing and how I do it so you can do it too. So that one's already made. I'm going to just get right to it and show you what you need to make this. Basically, and I've got, I'm hiding my stuff down here to keep it dry. But you're going to need an empty gallon jug that's, make sure you wash it out. You don't want any milk residue. That's got about a third of the ways worth of warm water. That's because we're going to be using yeast and we want the warm water to activate the yeast. Okay, it doesn't have to be hot. A little warmer than lukewarm, but not hot. You're going to need a fourth of a cup of sugar, which I'm hiding down here to keep my homemade funnel dry. You're going to need some well-ripened fruit, and I'm using a rotten banana. Rotten equals well-ripened, okay? and then just a little bit of dishwashing detergent. It's a very simple method, okay? You take your one-third jug full of warm water and you open up your yeast and you pour your yeast in your hot water or very warm water, it doesn't have to be so hot, okay? And then we're going to add our one-fourth. That rooster's mad at me. He's been uh, going on our back porch today and making messes if you know what I mean and I've been I clean it up now I'm kind of shooing him off the back porch because I don't want to be out there cleaning up he doesn't like it he's allowed to go anywhere in the world he wants except the back porch and he always likes to go on the back porch so anyway I'm gonna get this sugar down in here my anyway we've got our warm water our one packet of yeast and we've got our fourth of a cup of sugar we're gonna give that a, a bit of a mix here to get the fermentation process going now we're gonna add a little bit of our well-ripened fruit. You don't have to use a lot. This is basically to help send out the odor of the fermentation process. This is what will lure in the beetles. The beetles are gonna smell this and they're gonna be attracted to it and leave our green bean TP and come into here. Now, with the dishwashing detergent, you use about a tablespoonful. You can guesstimate, that's what I do. You just put it in. The main purpose of this is it, it makes like an oil slick. Um, so when the beetles come into the jug, if they try to, to crawl out, basically they're coated with a slick substance and they slide back down into your, into your concoction here and, and, and uh, they expire. I'll use that word so it doesn't sound so cruel. So, so from this point, we're just going to go hang it up beside our green bean teepee with a bit of rope. So let's head over to the garden where we'll show you how we're going to do that. So here we are in the garden and here's our beautiful green bean teepee that's being decimated by the Japanese beetles. Okay. I was being a little over the top there. It's not really being decimated, but they have attacked. Honey, come closer and let's show them what's going on up here. Fortunately, we noticed this relatively quickly, but you can see the Japanese beetle damage up here. Here's a, here's a beetle under here. They're hiding from the rain. It's been raining most of the day, and so the rain's been knocking them off, which has been a big help to us. But as soon as the rain stops, they're coming back, and we know that. However, we're gonna have something waiting on them, and that's our Japanese beetle trap we just made. Um, I'm simply going to secure the trap to a fence post over here using a piece of line. I'm actually using a piece of old clothes hanger line here. 
We want to make sure it stays secure and uh, doesn't fall down. You want to keep this up off the ground, okay? And what's going to happen, obviously, is the Japanese beetles are going to smell the well-ripened fruit and the, they're going to smell the odor that occurs as a result of the fermentation process that's going on with the yeast and the sugar, that beautiful sweet smell. So what they're going to say, who wants those nasty old green beans when we have that nice sweet smell coming from over there? They're going to go in here to feed on our concoction. And then, of course, as you know, they're not going to make it back out. And this is going to be the end of them. And I've got the other one I'm going to put back here. But that's all there is to it, folks, as far as making a Japanese beetle trap goes. Keep them off of your vegetables in your garden and get them into the trap. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you learned something from it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel, Homesteading Off The Grid, and we'll see you next time.